Hey everyone, welcome back. So today is Thursday. Sorry, I didn't post anything yesterday. My youngest son was unfortunately ill. He's still ill, but he's a little bit better. We'll see how it goes. So obviously family takes precedence. So now we're kind of catching up on things that are going on. So a couple of things we want to talk about is obviously Bitcoin starting to go back up a little bit. But we have a story on CZ from Binance, um, an interview that he did. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. We got a solar powered Bitcoin miner. We'll take a look at that as well. And then we got DMG blockchain news, DG host news, and BitDigital provided their Q1 results. So we'll take a look at all those, see how I compared to their numbers as far as what I had for them making them. And we'll get into everything as always. So as always, not financial advice. You guys know the drill here. And I'm investing in fund coins and companies. Full disclosure. So let's get into the, well, let's get into Bitcoin first. And then we'll get from there to the miners. See how they did today. All right. So here's Bitcoin on the one hour chart. Uh, I believe it was yesterday or the, it was yesterday, I think I, tweeted uh, the, a tweet saying that Bitcoin was looking a little bit bearish on the one hour chart. We could be pulling back a little bit and, and we did a little bit, not as far as I thought we were gonna go, but we did go a little bit. So I posted a tweet yesterday, basically stating that Bitcoin is right now looking bearish based on what I'm seeing on the RSI. RSI was flat in this period while the price was going down. And I tweeted this about, oh, I think it was like, the right around nine o'clock or something like that. And we did go down to about 19,756. Bitcoin obviously is now at 21,000, so we've come back up. And I did notice that we are having a little bit of a bullish sign right now on the one hour chart, looking at the RSI at 53 here. We had it two times on here and price of Bitcoin has gone up on it. So that's a little bit bullish right there for us. Um, so in the short term, we could be looking a little bit bullish where we could be going up to 21,500 maybe even seeing where that leads us to as we do have a little bit of room to go on the RSI, but we really won't know until that happens. But at least right now we're looking a little bit bullish on it and we'll see how long that continues until we see something else happen where we get a reversal pattern happening where once again, RSI is flat and Bitcoin price is coming back down and I'll probably tweet about it or we'll do a video on it or something like that. So stay tuned for that. But right now Bitcoin is looking great. The miners were looking great today as well. They weren't looking great early in the day, but they did bounce back towards the afternoon which was good as well. So Ethereum is also at 1,139 right now. It has obviously been following suit with Bitcoin. And we can see here on the RSI that the RSI is about the same between these two time frames, and the price has gone up as well. So we are having a little bit bullish sign right there as well, at least on the one hour chart. Uh, looking back at the Bitcoin, let's take a look at the four hour chart, see if we're seeing any kind of signals here that would tell us that we're still bullish on it. And I'm trying to see here if there's anything that would point to that direction. I mean, right now we're still looking a little bit flat on it. Trading sideways, at least in the four hours. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, short term, we're looking bullish. Long term, we'll see how it pans out going forward. All right, let's take a look at the miners here. So like I said, the miners for the most part were down on the day, but then they climbed back up a little bit towards the end of the day. And we are at on a daily let's take a look at the one hour chart see how they did during the day we can see here that they did fall during the day and then finally bounced back up a little bit here so we can see that annie was up 1.79 percent to 68 cents up a little bit more in the after hours to 68 uh, just 68.6 argo was wait where did argo argo is not loading for me why is it not loading well this is strange there we go there's bit farms Argo, let's go to the daily. There we go. So Argo was down 2.33% today to 42 cents. Bit digital on the daily. Uh, let's take a one hour look here. We can see the same thing. It did go up and go come back down and go back up again. So it was up 7.64% on the day to $1.55. It's flat in the after hours right now. Bit farms. Same thing. It was falling and then came back up. And it's well, fell a little bit in the after hours, but came back up. So it's up 5.34% on the day, $2.38. Up a little bit more in the after hours, $2.39, which is good to see as well. Clean Spark was up 4.6% on the day to $4.78. Down a little bit in the after hours to $4.75. Uh, Cores was down 3.76 to $2.05. And it's up a little bit in the after hours right now to $2.09. Digihost was up 4.31% to $1.21. DMG was down, oh, some of these guys aren't, showing up here. There we go. DMG was down 0.41% to 19 and a quarter cents. 
Hive was up 7.67% to $3.23. Flatten the after hours. Hut 8 was up 3.87 to $1.61. Up another 3.42% in the after hours to $1.66. Iris Energy was down 5.21% to $3.09. And this could be basically because they are slowing down their uh, expansion a little bit based on where Bitcoin is and everything else. We talked about it in not yesterday's video, but it was on Tuesday's video. Um, so they're obviously reaching a new 52-week low of $2.89 today. They're down more in the after hours to $2.95. Luxfolio was down a lot, 14 cents or 14% to $0.09 cents now. And Marathon was up 4.44% to $7.05, up a little bit in the after hours to $7.07. Mawson was up 6.25% to $1.36. Riot was up 7.39% to $4.94, up a little bit in the after hours to $4.96. And Stronghold was up 8.33% to $1.82, up a little bit more in the after hours to $1.86. So there's all the miners for the day. For the most part, most of them were in the green, which is good. Obviously, Bitcoin bounced during the day, so did the miners. And that's kind of what we're going to be seeing here. So Bitcoin's up a couple of percentage points, and you can see most of these miners were up above 5% on the day, which is also good. All right. So let's take a look at our first story here from CZ. So CZ Bitcoin could chart new all-time highs in up to two years. And that would kind of coincide with the next halving event. Next halving event is basically two years away. Usually a year prior to that, we start going back up in price. So from now until next year sometime, we might be trading sideways. We might be going up and down, kind of being a little bit fluid unless we get some really good news and things will pop from there. So CZ, CEO of the world's biggest crypto exchange, Binance, believes it will take Bitcoin between a few months to two years to reach its current all-time high of nearly 70,000. He also predicted that the big cryptocurrency projects will survive the bear market while the small ones could be in trouble, which I agree. Um, the small ones may not be as well-funded. And we've obviously seen some of the ones having a hard time right now is uh, Celsius. We also saw Terra fall off the earth and we, we might have some problem obviously with uh, three arrows capital as well so we'll see how that plays out here's a quote from him so i think given the price drop from all-time high of 69 to twenty thousand, now it will probably take a while to get back and probably will take a few months or a couple of years no one can pr predict the future and that's right no one can we can only look at the charts and see maybe uh, slimmers of hope here and there Subsequently, uh, Binance's CEO argued that the ongoing crypto winter could be a concern for smaller projects that joined the ecosystem during the last bull market. On the contrary, bigger enterprises that have been part of the industry for years will endure the crisis as well, which I would agree. We've seen, obviously, some of the big players been through this in 2017 and 2018, and they came out stronger at, uh, from it. So just kind of want to point that out. Uh, and then here's the last quote from him. For me, I don't have dollars. Everything I have is in cryptos. So when I need to spend money, I need to spend some, some parts of it somewhere. For me, I'm all in cryptos. I don't think about selling crypto. Crypto is my money. So he's still bullish on, obviously, on crypto, which is good news. Next one. This is kind of interesting. So a solar-powered Bitcoin miner starts operations despite difficult market. So Aspen Creek Digital will also host miners for Galaxy Digital as its new data center in Western Colorado. We also know Galaxy Digital is basically a lending service out there for a lot of the um, miners and crypto-based lending and things like that. Uh, and that's with uh, Mike Novogratz at the helm of Galaxy Digital, I believe, on that one. So here's a picture of the farm, I guess. This is Aspen Creek Digital's first Bitcoin mining center in Western Colorado. So that's kind of cool. Um, obviously, during the day when you got plenty of sun, it's kind of great. Um, I didn't see anything in the article being mentioned uh, how, far, how they're going to be mining at night, uh, whether they're going to be using regular traditional power from other facilities or something else. So to, despite the bear market for crypto, Aspen Creek Digital, a new Bitcoin miner, has started mining at a 6 megawatt solar powered facility in the western part of Colorado. So 6 megawatts is actually, you know, not that small. It's pretty small. Well, it's not big. I'd say it's on a smaller scale of the miners that we cover. Some of them are 200 megawatts or or bigger than that to go into some of them are going to be one gigawatt. Uh, Esmond Creek was founded in January and its mining operations is co-located at a solar farm that has a capacity of 10 megawatts. Um, the company also wants to start uh, with mining Bitcoin in its data center and eventually offer computing services to other businesses, so possibly GPUs, things like that. 
Uh, and the Colorado Data Center will run S19 Bitcoin mining machines and be co-located with a 75,000 square foot research and development center and fulfillment facility. The facility will serve as a centralized testing, maintenance, storage, and training hub for Aspen Creek's computing infrastructure. So kind of cool there, but they do have obviously growth plans as well. Uh, the miners entering in the industry at a time when existing miners are finding it difficult to remain profitable. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Um, I think the big players still have pretty good margins on it. They're still mining Bitcoin below ten thousand uh, dollars, you know, for electricity costs and other things. So I think they're okay there. Um, some of the smaller guys that don't have great pricing electricity, yeah, they might be having a little bit of a hard time. But the big guys that we cover here, I think they all should be fine. Uh, so continuing on here with the decline in crypto prices, hash rates that are near all-time highs, a tightening capital market, higher power costs, and supply chain issues, which are all true as well. So power first. So crypto-focused finance services firm Galaxy Digital was impressed enough by the miners management team and power first approach that it allocated some of its Galaxy some of Galaxy's own miners to be hosted at Aspen Creek's Colorado site. The best time to build a, to, I'm sorry, the best time to build is a, in a bear market and people shouldn't be afraid of the market conditions. They just have to make sure that they, that they, that they are doing it appropriately and effectively. Amanda Fabiano, head of mining at Galaxy, told Coindesk, and I would agree, obviously now could be as, if you're properly funded, right now is actually a great time because you're able to get miners at a much lower cost. Uh, obviously, the big thing is obviously electricity costs have gone way up, so getting a good rate on that is obviously going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, Aspen Creek is also developing Bitcoin mining sites across Texas. Its second facility, which is on track to be operational this summer, is a 30 megawatt data center capable of hosting 10,000 ASIC miners, co-located behind the meter with 87 megawatt solar farm. And a third project is a 150 megawatt data center, also co-located behind, uh, behind the meter, with a 200 megawatt solar farm. So that's pretty interesting there. That 200 megawatt is really interesting there. So if we take the 200 megawatt, 30 megawatts, they're gonna be close to, or 87. They're gonna be at like 300 megawatts or something like that, above 300 megawatts by the time everything is said and done. Continuing on, so although the miners operations will be powered by solar energy, they will still be connected to the grid to have, okay, there it is, option to provide power back to the grid. When asked about the electric Reliability Council of Texas' latest requirement for new large-scale miners to seek permission before connecting to the grid. Da Costa said that her company had already successfully completed, completed the procedural requirements for its second site and is doing the appropriate work for the third site. So that's good news as well there. So they might be a pretty good player here, especially with the mining um, with solar. I uh, would imagine that the prices on that is, are going to be very attractive. Uh, Aspen Creek said it was able to figure out the power sources with the help of its partners that have experience in building renewable energy power infrastructure. The renewable power developers are also part of the miners' funding group and equity invest investors in the company. So they obviously have a leg in the game, which is also really good as well. The move to use solar as a power source comes as more miners are looking to use renewable sources of energy for their operations as lawmakers around the world scrutinize miners' energy consumption, which is obviously correct. Uh, most recently, Blackstream and Black said that they are building a pilot crypto mine in Texas that will, pre, that will be powered by Tesla solar installation and batteries. So that's going to be really interesting there. That's kind of what I want to see is using solar, put it in batteries when you need it at night, run it from the batteries. How expensive is it going to be to build out that? I don't know. How efficient it's going to be? Obviously, you're going to have some losses there from the power draws and everything else. It's not going to be 100% efficient. But I think it's a great way of possibly moving the industry forward into the future where you do mine with just renewable energy. It's solar, whatever, it's wind. You pump it into the batteries at night or when you have wind, and then you run off of it. So I think that's a cool way to do it. And that's what I'm really interested to see going forward and see how that progresses also and see some information from them on that. All right. Next, we got DMG Blockchain Solution. Inc. announces launch of TerraPool. <coughs> Excuse me. The first Bitcoin pool focused on carbon neutral mining. And here is the gist on that. So the company announced today that the launch of TerraPool, a clean renewable energy Bitcoin mining pool partnership between DMG and Argo Blockchain. Testing has concluded and TerraPool is now open to the general public uh, for mining. TerraPool developed using DMG's Black Series technology is a unique Bitcoin mining pool focused on clean energy as the basis for participation. The pool allows its members to showcase their commitment to clean energy operations and creates new Bitcoin from renewable energy sources. 
I checked out the website and it is like, um, I think you have to have a minimum of 10 petahash mining pool. So all you home miners out there, you will not apply for this. Uh, continuing on down here. So the goal is obviously to be 100% clean renewable energy sources for each miner. I don't know how they're going to check that. I'm sure you're going to have to fill out some kind of paperwork providing where you're getting your power from. Monetization of the Terra pool created Bitcoin, which may derive a price premium over other Bitcoin. This is where I disagree. They may get a premium, but that premium was going to be from institutional investors, I think. Uh, most people don't really care, unfortunately, where their Bitcoin is coming from or where it's mined. They could care less if it's being mined with coal or, uh, you know, with renewable energies. I think for the most part, the majority of consumers don't care. Uh, there are obviously consumers that are ESG and they will care about it, obviously. So they might get a premium there, but I think for the most part, general public doesn't care. That's just my viewpoint on that one. Uh, continuing on, so annual audits by an independent third-party audit firm providing greater transparency of pool operations. This is a good thing. This is fine. I'm fine with that. And the association with other clean energy miners rather than those supporting carbon-intensive energy sources. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. I had to clear my throat a little bit. Um, so that's fine and all. Obviously, this is going to be another way for them to make a little bit more extra Bitcoin by having companies join in and they're going to get obviously fees from that as well. So I'm okay with that. I think this is kind of cool. Next is DigiHost. Got a little bit of DigiHost. So DigiHost completes acquisition of 55 megawatt site in Alabama. We covered this a while back when they reported that they were working on it. So the company is obviously pleased to announce that it has completed its previously announced transaction with uh, Grade Greed. LLC to acquire property in the state of Alabama in order to expand the company's current operational capacity. The total cash cash consideration paid for the property by the company was $1.5 million, with an additional $1.25 million to be paid in 25 equal monthly installments of $50,000 per month. All monetary references in this press release are expressed in USD unless otherwise indicated. And what else do we have here? DigiHost plans to immediately commence construction and development of the facilities, which is good, in Alabama, with the goal of bringing the property to a hashing capacity of 28 megawatts by the end of third quarter of 2022, and a total of 55 megawatts by the end of first quarter of 2023. So that's also great. Um, so it's nice to see them building out, even though we are in a little bit of a bear market. So in line with this uh, capacity expansion, the company's intention is to send a portion of its existing mining inventory to Alabama to allow DigiHost to capture significant synergies which, in concert with the lower direct energy costs it is procuring from Alabama Power, will help reduce the company's overall operational ex costs. So, great right there as well. Good to see uh, DigiHost moving to expand their, obviously, hash rate. And I'm all for this. This is great. And finally, we got BitDigital. So, BitDigital Inc. announces first quarter fiscal year 2022 financial results. We'll go over here the highlights and we'll take a look at the actual. Oh, no, we won't go over the sheet because I just deleted the sheet. Huh. Okay, so we'll just go over this here really quick and then we'll get into my numbers here. So, Bitcoin mining revenue was $8 million for the first quarter of 2022. Revenue from Ethereum mining was um, $0.5 million, so half a million. They had cash and cash equivalents of $28.1 million and total liquidity as defined as cash and digital assets of approximately $73.3 million. As of March 31st, 20, uh, total assets were 169.6 million as of March 31st, which is good as well. We've obviously had a big drop down in Bitcoin price, so that is obviously going to be, oh, probably, uh, let's see here, probably a quarter of what they had, um, not a quarter, maybe 30% of that, because we've come way down in Bitcoin price. Non-gap income from operations was uh, half a million and non-GAAP net income was $2.9 million, or $0.04 uh, cents per earnings per share. So that was good. Obviously, they did obviously take a hit on it. For depreciation of property, share-based compensation, and non, uh, in the regular GAAP, it was, uh, they were in the negative territory on it. Uh, operational highlights for the first quarter, the company earned 194.48 Bitcoins and 189.26 Ethereum. During the quarter, factors impacting production included the company's ongoing minor redeployment program, growth in, in overall Bitcoin network hash rate, and the number of days in a quarter, which is all true. Obviously, they have been moving from China last year when China banned mining, they and they're struggling to get everything installed right now in the U.S., 
Treasury holdings of BTC and Ethereum were 832.14 and 266.71 with a fair market value of approximately 27.6 million and 0.6 million of Ethereum on March 31st, respectively. The company owned 27,644 Bitcoin miners and 731 Ethereum miners as of March 31st with an estimated maximum total hash rate of 1.6 for Bitcoin and 0.3 for Ethereum. As of May 31st, the company owned 33,376 Bitcoin miners with an estimated maximum total hash rate of 2.17 exahash, which is really good as well. Let's see here. Some other news. Subsequent to the quarter end, the company signed a miner swap agreement with Riot Blockchain, which provides for Riot to deliver miners rated at 0.625 exahash to the company in exchange for 0.5 exahash delivered from the company to Riot a 25% boost in favor of the company. So I'm surprised Riot would do that. And well, obviously good for Bid Digital, but <coughs> Riot uh, lost out on this for some reason, or at least they thought that was a good uh, good way to do this, whether they're selling the miners or something like that. As of May 31st, the company had received 5,023 machines pursuant to its previously announced 10,000 unit purchase agreement with Bitmain Technologies. The final installment is expected to ship in June of 2022. Pro forma for these announced purchases and the minor swap with Riot, our maximum total hash rate is expected to be approximately 2.8x hash. So that's really good as well. And the company purchased 706 Bitcoin miners on the spot market during the first quarter and took delivery of these machines during April 2022. The company also sold 100 micro BT West miners during the quarter. And let me see here. Subsequent to the quarter end, the company signed a new 20 megawatt hosting agreement with CoinMint LLC. Approximately half of this capacity has been delivered as of this date of this report, which with the remainder scheduled for early July, the claimant facility utilizes power that is 90% emission free. So that's good. So at least they have signed some agreements to where they can get their miners installed. Management commentary here. Uh, let me see if there's anything interesting that we haven't covered already on top. We got the 20 megawatt claimant. Uh, Coinment has already fulfilled approximately half of this capacity, so there are 10 megawatts, looks like, with the remainder scheduled for early July. Further, we signed a minor swap agreement, we covered that. Uh, the, combined expect, the combined effect of our agreements with Coinment and Riot is expected to roughly triple our active hash rate over the span of about a month. So that's good, they're about, I think, not even half a exahash right now, or close to that, so that would get them up to about 1.5 exahash, so that's really good as well. Uh, finally, power has been partially restored at our partner, DigiHost North Tawanda, New York site, and remediation and repair work is underway at the Block Fusions, Niagara Falls, New York site as well. And then, obviously, unsurprisingly, our first quarter results faced difficult comparisons to the prior year when the majority of our fleet was deployed in China and the network hash rates were lower. Further decrease in Bitcoin prices since late 2021 has coincided with the increase in network hash rate, reducing industry-wide margins and heightening competition. Our strong balance sheet propositions us to successfully navigate these market headwinds. We remain debt free and had over 70 million of cash and digital assets as of March 31st. We have already paid all of our minor purchase obligations and have no other significant capital commitments as of the date of report. So that is good as well. So they are basically debt free. And let's take a look at the numbers here. They don't have all the numbers here that I want to look at. So we're going to go to their website here and we're going to pull it up. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go to investors. Uh, financial information there we go first quarter of 2022 we want to view the report so here's a report hopefully it held all of my data that i had highlighted here let's see here we were down here obviously we can see that the number of bitcoins that they mined over time was greatly increased in q1 of 2021 and then we've obviously been falling down ever since then since they started moving miners out so that is normal, obviously, to see. And then hopefully they can start getting that back up here. Okay. So revenue from digital asset mining was obviously 8.5. I had them at 8.8, I believe, and from my estimates. So it wasn't too far off. I was up by about 3% on it. We'll take a look at the numbers here in a minute. Operating costs was obviously way down, 4.2 million from 12 million. But obviously, the amount of income that they had was obviously way down as well. Depreciation was about the same as prior year. General administration expenses was double, which I'm surprised by that. And obviously total operating expenses was negative 12 million. Income from operations was negative 3.7 million. Uh, what else did I have here? Net loss was 10.1 million for the quarter where they had a positive 35 million the year prior. So obviously a big change there. And we know what 
what the reason for that is. Also coming down here, income, uh, nine gap was 2.8 million net income and four cents per share, basically nine gap basic and diluted earnings. So that was good there. Obviously not as good as last year at 82, but they were still able nine gap to be positive on that one. Uh, let's see here, where else do we have it? Current assets. So current assets, total current assets is 78 million as of March 31st. Total non-current assets was about 91 million. That's so total assets 169 million, which is fine. A little bit lower than the year prior of 179 million. Liabilities was a little bit lower from last year, which is good as well. And total shareholder equity was 161 million. So that's good as well. Let me see if there's anything else. Any, nope, that's it. So obviously they're struggling to get all their miners installed. So they had a little bit weaker, well, a lot weaker quarter than they did the year prior. So I had them at 8.86 million. They came in at 8.5, so I was off by 3.34% on trying to figure out where they would be. They're obviously going to be, I have them at 363 petahash right now based on the fact that they had, DigiHost had issues with their facility up in Niagara Falls. Somebody else also had, so that dropped them down for the month of May and June. And that was here. Yeah, I took out a lot for May, so that dropped them down and even more here in June. But they are going to be possibly tripling that. I don't know if it's going to be before March quarter that they're going by or if they're going through what they actually had here in May and June. So we'll see. Once we get a June report in, it'll be interesting to see. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a nice big jump in here to possibly above um, seven, you know, 700 petahash or something like that. So that'll be a nice plus there. And what else can I tell you here? So uh, we'll also need to get these miners installed here someplace. So we'll see what they report. Also, going forward, we're obviously using the current quarter estimates, which right now are at about 5.6 million. And we're using the last three quarters, which includes the prior two quarters in 2021 and the current quarter of the 8.5 million here. So we're getting them at approximately 38 million right now for those three, those four quarters. Uh, obviously, it's going to change in June once we get the June report because they are going to be possibly putting in a lot of miners. So that's going to be a good uptick there. Um, so based on that, a 20 p ratio, we're looking at a dollar 81, 75 percent net income from gross revenue. They're probably in between here, between the 50 and the 75 a little bit because they are solely relying on uh, co-location hosting. Um, so others are providing the hosting location for them. So they are paying probably a little bit more for that than they would had they own had they owned their own facilities on that. But that's obviously a 20 price earnings multiple, which I would think they'd be probably closer down to 10 or something like that, based on where they are and their growth here on that. So I would say between 60 cents and 90 cents right now, I think they're just overvalued at dollar fifty-five. With the 500 market 500 million market cap, it's higher than some of the other guys that are actually making this. So it's kind of interesting there. So I think that's it. Uh, like I said, we'll see what obviously June is going to be a big month for them, possibly along with July, getting all those miners installed. And it'll be kind of nice for them to get those miners installed because they've been sitting on those miners for quite a while here since last year. And they've been really struggling to get those miners installed. So we'll obviously have to see how that plays out. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, as always, the spreadsheet is available to my Patreon members. Thank you to those guys for their support. Appreciate it greatly there. Um, also, we're going to do probably a video on miners versus miners, uh, maybe tomorrow or over the weekend. I'll do some videos on that. I'm going to have to see how my son's doing. Um, and we'll go from there. So obviously, we're hoping Bitcoin continues to go up. That'd be nice. Uh, hopefully, we bottomed out here, but we won't know until X number of days, months down the road. All right. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out. That's all I ask. Other than that, have a great evening. Have a wonderful Friday and weekend uh, if you guys, if I don't see you then. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.